The soldiers were assisting mankind in their transition to Nova Prime. It discovers a world where humans are transforming, as well as other aliens. To get rid of humanity, the aliens unleash bizarre beasts on them. However, the beast was definitely definitely Dea. After noticing humans' frightening behavior, this beast assaults them. The creatures identify and attack the humans who were terrified of them. Because of such monsters, humans were now on the verge of extinction. The picture cuts to the army, which is the same army we saw at the beginning of the film. This army has been looking for a solution to put an end to the beast in order to save the humans. Cypher, the army's commander, has devised a method of annihilating those monsters. He coined the term ghosting to describe how he can approach them without being detected by the beast. When such creatures become entirely blind, they are killed. The next scene depicts a group of teenagers. Nova Prime was instructing them on how to become rangers. Katai, a young kid, is depicted in this group of teenagers. This kid, Katai, is said to be Commander Cypher's son, whom I told you he had discovered the art of ghosting. In this world, human life was saved because of him. Katai aspired to be a ranger after his sister was killed by those creatures while attempting to save him. He was training to be a ranger in order to avenge his sister and put an end to the left beasts. On the day of the evaluation, Katai was informed that he would not be chosen due to his poor performance. Katai becomes enraged as a result, and Katai's father, who has returned home from his mission, is shown. During dinner, Cypher meets his wife and asks his son Katai, what happened with your training? Katai responds that he was unable to choose as a ranger. Katai grows enraged when Cypher tells him that he needs to work harder. Cypher stops Katai as he was about to leave. Cypher informs his wife after dinner that he is leaving on his final assignment. He will retire from his work after training some rangers. Katai should accompany you, according to Cypher's wife. She also tells Katai that he still blames himself for his sister's death and that he will learn how to be a ranger. Cypher and Katai are pictured ready for their next assignment the next day. A ranger comes to Cypher before they leave. Despite the fact that he is missing a leg, he salutes Cypher on his one leg. Because during the war, Cypher saved his life. Katai is pleased to see his father's regard. The rangers may be seen loading the monsters into their spacecraft. For the purpose of training. The starship departs Nova Prime in search of a new planet. Cypher instructs his kid Katai to take a break. Because of the strange chairs on the spaceship, Katai wasn't sleeping well. Katai gets out of his seat and walks to the side where the monster was bound. Katai is stopped from moving approaching Ursa by a ranger. He is allowed to approach Ursa by the group of rangers seated nearby. Just to check if he has the same bravery as his father. Katai detects Ursa's anxiety as he approaches. It seeks to express itself through rage. Cypher awakens at this time and notices that something is amiss with the spaceship. With the help of his drink, he checks the ship's gravitational force. In the ship, he senses that something is shut. Kiai settles into his seat and fastens his seatbelt. Cypher is on his way to the pilot's seat. We observe that the ship has accidentally entered an asteroid shower. As a result, the ship is damaged, and it is unable to reach its target. They now have to find a suitable world for mankind. The pilot conducts a search and discovers the nearby planet Earth. Because there was nothing left when the humans went, Cypher doesn't think it's safe. They have no choice but to settle on Earth since they have no other option. The ship was hurtling towards the ground at a breakneck speed. When Cypher saw his son Katai, he was terrified. He was recalling the moment his sister died. Cypher soothes his son. Because of the great speed, the ship breaks. They are thrown from the ship. He stayed in his seat since he had fastened his seat belt. Katai passes out as a result of the crash landing. After thousands of years, humanity has finally returned to their homeland. Katai regains consciousness and notices the bodies of rangers all around him. There, he discovers Cypher's body. Katai hugs him, but after a while, when Cypher comes to his wits, Katai is taken aback. The one saving grace was that Cypher was still alive. The bad news is that his legs were severely wounded. 
Katai is asked by Cypher how many individuals are living. Except for us, Katai informs Cypher, everyone is dead here. Katai also informs Cypher that the section of the ship where Ursa was held captive has vanished. Cypher had the impression that the creature had died in this accident. Katai is cautioned by him. Katai learns about a communicator from Cypher. Beacon is its name. In the event of an emergency, it sends rescue signals from the Nova Prime. However, they were disappointed to see that Beacon had been completely destroyed. Cypher is taken to the control panel by Katai. Fortunately, it was still functional. From this control panel, Cypher looks for the location of the other beacon. It was located in a different part of the ship. At the time of the crash landing, that section of the ship was 100 kilometers away. They can't return home without a beacon, therefore they must obtain one at all costs. Because Cypher's legs were injured and he couldn't walk, Katai needs to take care of everything. Katai had a difficult time juggling everything. Cypher assures him that he will keep an eye on him through the control panel. Cypher uses it to offer Katai advice on how to save herself from the Earth's beast. In thousands of years, these organisms will become hazardous to humans. Katai is given a communicator, weapons, and capsules by Cypher. There was fluid in the pills, which helped to boost oxygen levels. The oxygen level on Earth was low at the time. He may have difficulty breathing as a result of it. The climate was also harmed as a result of the Earth's damaged atmosphere. Katai is asked to live in a warm environment by Cypher. As a result, the heat of the soil will keep him warm at night. Cypher examines his leg as Katai walks away. It was severely harmed. Because of his extreme agony, Cypher takes painkillers. He is drowsy as a result of it. Cypher observes Katai has arrived in a jungle before going to sleep. He was about to be attacked by a beast. Cypher rushes to tell Katai about the animals. He asks him to keep his distance from them. Katai is now visible, with a massive monkey lurking behind him. Katai, terrified of the monkey, tosses a stone at it. Katai was ready to be attacked by a gang of monkeys, but he managed to flee. Cypher was directing Katai in the control panel's directions. Katai was attempting to flee the scene. The monkeys eventually leave him. A venomous leech attaches itself to his body when he leaps into a river. Cypher remained at the control panel, keeping an eye on Katai. Katai is given the antidote by him. While injecting the antidote, Katai passes out. After some time, Cypher awakens Katai because the Earth's temperature has dropped. Before the night falls, he must make his way to the Earth's hotspot. If he doesn't want to be frozen to death. Katai flees to a hotspot in order to preserve his life. While performing his surgery, Cypher is shown. Cypher had a sinking sensation he wouldn't make it. Before he dies, he sees some memories of his family. Katai was likewise in a bad spot because his two capsules were damaged when he was escaping. If he wants to stay alive, he must get to his destination. Cypher inquires about Katai's situation and lies that everything is good. Katai is pictured secure in a cave as night falls. Katai asks Cypher, how did you come up with the ghosting technique? Cypher claims that Ursa appeared in front of him when he was walking somewhere. After witnessing Ursa, Cypher stands there terrified. Ursa begins to scream in a peculiar tone at his shoulder. They ended up in a river as a result of this. Ursa was upside down at the bottom of the river, according to Cypher. It was going to devour Cypher, and I had already accepted my fate. My fear had vanished from my head. Because Cypher's dread had vanished, Ursa was unable to see him. It was quickly ended by Cypher. Katai has figured out that they don't need to be feared. Katai falls asleep while he listens to his father's narrative. The next morning, Katai resumes his journey. Cypher senses Ursa's presence on the other side. Katai reaches the top of a tall waterfall. He will be able to go to his destination while crossing it. Cypher asks Katai how many oxygen capsules he has at this time. When Katai tells him he only has two pills, he feels embarrassed. Katai is asked to leave his mission by Cypher. Katai recalls the time his sister rescued him from Ursa. He falls into a deep depression. 
He tells Cypher, who is enraged, that he is not a coward and jumps from the waterfall. He was utilizing his costume as a guide direction after jumping. A large bird attacks him before he reaches the bottom. Because of that, his communicator breaks, and he loses touch with Cypher. After spending some time in a bird's nest, Katai awakens. Katai was surrounded by little chicks. As Katai emerges from the nest, he is attacked by a leopard. Katai engages in combat with the leopard in order to save his life. During this struggle, all of the females die. Katai flees the scene to avoid the bird. On the other hand, Cypher is shown using the satellite monitor to look for Katai. Instead of Katai, he encounters two officers. They were hung from a tree. He learns that Ursa is still alive as a result of this. Katai is seen napping in a cave once more. He creates a map, and with it, he will be able to determine the direction of the tail. The next morning, Katai resumed his journey. He was being pursued by the bird as well. Katai was having trouble breathing as well. He inhales the last of his oxygen capsules. Katai builds a boat and falls asleep on it while going. Katai awakens to find the Earth's temperature dropping and everything around him becoming frozen. Katai becomes dizzy due to the cold. A strange object seemed to be drawing Katai towards it. He realizes the next morning that a bird was hunting him and that it had saved his life. Katai thanks the bird, but then realizes that it is no longer alive. Katai moves on without wasting any time. He reaches the ship's stern. He starts by looking for liquid oxygen. He approaches the side of the ship where Ursa was imprisoned after taking the oxygen. He notices that Ursa isn't present. Katai discovers the beacon as well. Here, he makes contact with Cypher. However, because of technical difficulties, he was unable to hear Cypher. Cypher was relieved to learn that his son was still alive. Katai uses a beacon to communicate with the rescue crew. Because of the environment, beacon was unable to function. A volcano is visible in Katai. Katai decides to bring a beacon with him. Ursa had arrived there before it, and Katai was fleeing from it. Ursa was relentless in her pursuit of him. Because it senses Katai's terror. Ursa, on the verge of devouring Katai, leaps into the ocean. For a little time, he was saved from Ursa in this way. From the lake, he travels to the mountain. Cypher is also shown to have passed out as a result of his injuries. Ursa frightened Katai as well. When Ursa approaches him, he recalls what his father said. Katai's terror dissipates as he accepts his death. Ursa was unable to locate him in this state. He was finally able to put an end to Ursa. He puts an end to Ursa and sends the rescue messages to Nova Prime using his beacon. In the final scene of the film, Katai is seen in a rescue ship, with everyone